All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cynthia Cavalcante. It's kind of a huge name. <laughs> Cynthia or Cynthia. Uh, and this is Courageous Happiness for You. Well, tonight we're going to talk about what creates happiness. We're also going to talk about the exact formula for happiness and how we can create long-term happiness. All right, so let's begin. So how, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously, I want you to get in touch with your emotion and, you know, take a deep breath. And maybe with one word or one phrase, I want you to tell me how are you feeling right now. Not this afternoon, not this morning, right now. I'm tired. Relaxed. Tired, relaxed. Optimistic. Optimistic. Peaceful. 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 Comfortable. Comfortable. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Happy. Happy. Steve? Better. Better. <laughs> Better. Steve? <laughs> He's here. Present. Maria? Very happy. That's good. Who else? Alan, Scott, Mark? Relaxed. Relaxed. This row is relaxed. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we move there. All right, that's good. You usually do that, right? On your daily basis. You get in touch with your own self, and then you do a reality check, and you take a deep breath, and you say, wow. And you label your feelings, right? Is that right? You do that. No? Sometimes. Rarely. No? But if you do, you do get an answer, right? You do? Yes. Okay, let me ask you this. What part of you answers this question? What do you think? It, it, it's not by the book. You don't have, it's, it's your opinion. What do you think? The emotional honesty. Your emotions. My conscience. M your consciousness. Sometimes my mind. Your mind. The body. The <laughs> body. That's your answer, your body. <laughs> right, right. Body right, me. absolutely. Right, your present. Heart. Your heart. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. It's our blueprint talking, right? It's our inner nature talking. It's our higher self. Do, do you know that you have a higher self, a blueprint, a inner nature? Yes? But what, what, how is this connected with happiness? If you and I, if we want to understand what makes us happy, we need to find out, we need to know, get in touch with our inner nature, our higher self. Okay, let's see how this works. I did. It did work. Okay, so we did this exercise. <coughs> and this blueprint in our society, society teaches us that uh, in order for us to, you are only good enough if you are very special, you do special and unique things. Certain things, right? The society, they have this this little movie that you, they play over and over again. So if you do this, if you do this and this tap, you're going to be happy. So we're going to talk about that. So let's, I'm going to give you an example of a traditional uh, <coughs> blueprint. Let's see. So a traditional blueprint, so you go to school. So you start in a school and you go all the way to graduation. You graduate. That's what, what the, that's the blueprint, the traditional blueprint in our society. And then you graduate, go all the way up, and then you find this perfect job, and then you start to build up your career and go all the way up, 
maybe become a director or executive. And then you find that special person to get married, right? And then you get married, and then you have kids, and then you live happily ever after, right? That, of course, this is an old, <laughs> this is an old traditional blueprint. But I'm sure you agree with me that still there are a lot of people that they think that they have to do exactly those steps. If they don't do that, they're not complete, they're not happy, they're not whole, right? So this is what we want, I, I'm trying to find out tonight. So what is the story that you play in your head? What is your blueprint? Okay, but <coughs> what is going to make you happy? <laughs> oh, is Obama? <laughs> is that Obama? Then let's go there, Maria. <laughs> let's go right now. Okay. I'm going to tell you what's going to make you happy. I got the formula. I got the formula. But first, before I tell you, <laughs> there you go. That's the catch. That's the catch. Before I tell you, do this test with me, OK? Let's do this little test, OK? So I want you to think about an area of your life that you're really you're feeling good about it. You feel proud about it. You feel happy about it. And I want you to think why. Okay? So think for a moment. What is that area of your life that you feel good about it? And why is that? I want you to think for it and then share with someone. Find someone. You got a few seconds. You understood the exercise? Right? Okay, then go. Share with someone. Talk about it. Did you switch? Did you switch? Go there, Marineji. Go there. Go there. Okay. Did you switch? Yes. Okay. We both worked to each other. Oh, do you, do you want to share your story? Can you share your story with me? Yeah, mine because I was very sick. Okay. My illness has nothing to do with my education, treatment, and it was everything about me. I got straightened out. So now I feel happy about it. And what does that, that make you feel? Yeah, I feel that I'm in control and I can control whatever comes along. <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Okay, let's wrap it up. In three, two, one. Let's come back here. Let's come back here. Who on? Let's come back here. Okay. Okay. Who is brave enough to share your story? Great. All right. Okay. You are the same? Like twins? Helping someone. How does that make you feel? Good. I'm, I came, just came from Mars, and I don't know what good means, what that means. I feel happy. You feel happy. What does that mean, feel happy for you? Can you describe? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. Okay, fulfilled as a? As a person. As a person? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so, and, and Francisco is the same. And etc. etc. <laughs> <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who else? <laughs> so the relaxed world. Uh, world. Do you, do you want to share your, what area of your life you feel good about it and why? Yeah, I pick two right away. They're they're equally the same formula, if you will. Uh huh. So it's family and work. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Supporting, Supporting each other. Way, I'm very independent. I don't necessarily work on, with the other people on my team. Right. right? I work with my own team uh -huh. as an as a executive manager. So that independence is... team supports each other. 
Oh. Allowed to do what we do. So right. The, the idea is um, it's always open for you to choose right. how you want to be happy. Right. The path is there. So the, the support. Is, is right. There. The contentment is there. The fulfillment is there. The productivity yeah. is uh, there. So you're able to just open and do what you feel like you have to do. So then and you the have the freedom. Right. So you have the support in the event that right. I'm not sure about that. So you have that. <coughs> That's people great. around you, mm -hmm. whether it's your professional colleagues or your own family, your wife, your children, uh, all of it a part of my balance. That's a great example. From this side, anybody else would like to share? <coughs> no? Is shy? Maria is shy? Is going away? No? Okay. I, I know there is somebody that want to say something. I know I'm a medium. I can see the same. Go ahead. Uh, I put feeling grateful for my living situation uh -huh. in, in South Florida. Uh, uh -huh. The ocean, not dealing with the snow. I work pretty close. Me to too. Uh, it, it's, it's peace. It's, it's freedom. Freedom, huh? I'm very and the nature, the contact with the nature gives a, a great feedback. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Disconnecting yeah. from the TV. Disconnecting from the TV. Yeah, it's a different lifestyle, and it makes you feel good about it. Steve? Actually, the area I feel best about my life. Uh huh. Wonderful to hear. Is sitting right here. Sitting right there, yeah. in that position. In this position. Exactly. I Turning the, the chair around. You know my reasons, but um, right. you know, being here within the spiritist group, I'm really happy uh, that I've you <laughs> came into my life and introduced this to me. Uh -huh. uh, and I don't know everything about this group. I think it's right. been a long time before right. I even get a grasp. Right. But I feel that this is a very positive Wonderful. notion. And is, That's great. And it is helping me to move forward. That's that's a wonderful feedback. It's it's good to hear that you feel good. It is good, and we we it's so good to hear all that because we all have wonderful stories. We're so resourceful, each one of us, and that's why I wish we had a time that enough to hear each one of you. Right? That that would be lovely. But next time, next time, but let let's keep going. So, why we did this exercise? Because I'm gonna tell you the formula for happiness. Is that right? Okay, so we all heard stories and we were talking with each other here. Uh, and basically we were talking about our blueprint. We were talking about our inner nature. What is important to me? So he was talking about the, how important it is to be independent and to have this freedom to do his job. And she was telling about that she overcame a situation and now she feels that she is more in control. So all those words of living with the nature and disconnecting with the TV and doing things that he loves to do, this is all telling that this is what, import, what is important for my blueprint. This is what is important. So what happened with our happiness is that every time we have a current life experience or situation, and the current life experience, it equals to our blueprint, to our, our belief system. We are aligned. Our in higher self is there in that experience with us. We are one. We are whole in that experience. And we are happy. It's, it is easy. I, and you could also think about other areas in your life that you feel happy about it. If you think why, well, this exercise is actually a therapy that you do with a piece of paper and a pen. And then you can write about it. You can do this at home. It's really good. You can do it any time you want. And then you figure it out. What is behind that story? What is your blueprint is telling you about what you're looking for? Not only in that experience, but in many other experiences in your life. So. And the same thing, we are not going to talk about, but the same thing for the unhappy areas of your life. So your current life situation, experience, is not matching your blueprint. You're going against your inner nature. 
it's got, you got to have a conflict there. But then again, we are here learning that, you know, we, we are in, in development, right? So we need to learn, we need to, to stop and think about what's going on in our life. So am I more than, a, than this moment and than this situation that I'm not happy about? Yes, of course, you are, you are. And the more we learn about this, the more we understand what, is, what we really, really want and what is talking to us, but it's very quiet, you know. Okay, let's double click on that inner nature thing. Okay, so we are talking about the nature of things, mine, yours, and the universe. So it's gotta be the same, right? So if someone jumps from a window, this person will suffer the law of gravity. This is for everyone, or does anyone here can fly? No, not, it's, it's, it's the same. Right? For every single person. We agree on that. Good. Okay. So, when we hurt ourselves, when we go against our nature, we're going to suffer the natural consequences of that too. It's the same for every one of us. There's no difference. It doesn't matter if you are richer, poorer, smarter, it doesn't matter. It's the same for everyone, right? It's the same law everywhere. So I'm gonna get a, a question from a book. This is my f the favorite book of my life. Top number one, I love this book. And let's get the, the question, uh, 621. Where is God's law written? Does anyone, but I wanna know your opinion. I don't want to know the book's opinion, okay? Because before you read that question, w what were you thinking? You, you didn't think about that question on your life. You were not born and two years old. I said, where is God's law written? And you said, in conscience. No, that's not true. So what is it? What did you think before you? The Bible. The Bible. Wonderful. Thank you. In heart. Huh? Heart. In heart. Parents, your parents, feelings. your feelings, conscience, 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 okay? Not grandmother one, no, no, it could be, okay? <laughs> okay, so for like the longest time, the thousands of years, we used to think that God's law was in a book. Easy, no? That's very simple. If the, all the God's law is in the Quran, I put the Quran in Saudi Arabia, never go there, never gonna know what God is trying to tell me. The same thing if I put God's law in the Torah and I never step my foot in Israel, what is God is, is, is telling the world? I have no idea. No idea. Okay. Now, if <laughs> God's law is in our conscience, can you run away from it? You can try, and I know you do, because I do too, right? We try to run away from that truth, but can you? Can try. Matter of fact, I think the animals are better than us, you know, because they don't have this problem. They don't have this problem. Have you ever seen a dog going to a psychologist and say, hey, I'm in life crisis. I don't want to be a dog anymore. I'm tired of barking. I'm done with that. Or a zebra saying, I don't want to be like this black and white anymore. I'm tired. No, right? Because they know their nature. By the way, in the Spirit's book, there is a beautiful part talking about that intelligence, the, the instinct. It's beautiful. Okay. So we cannot run away from it. 
Hold on. How do I do this now? Oh. Okay. So we can try to run away, but we can't. And let's see. There is a very intriguing question that I bring that is all close to each other. These three questions just brought three questions, and they're very close to each other. And uh, let's see this next one because it's very intriguing. So since humans carry God's law in their conscience, why does it have to be revealed? If it's right here, why does it have to be revealed? If you have, you have, I have, why? To remind us. And years ago, how do you used to think? Why is that? What is the answer? What do you think in your, in your heart? Why does it have to be revealed? Okay, if I'm going to try to answer that, I'm going to say that because we've been, we've been taught by so many other people uh, in the spirits, mm -hmm. we've been hypnotized into believing that we can do these things and we can't. Mm-hmm. And that it's that we you know, think that these things are true and that they don't for those rules. Mm-hmm. Well, the speeches say they have forgotten and disregarded it, but God has willed for them to remember it. So it's to remind us. That's why we are here. Because what is the reason, if it's in our conscience, and then everybody knows about it, why Spiritist Center? Why Spiritist Group? To get back on the track. Yeah, so we can experience this new me. Right, this is more spiritual, uh, conscious person, right? So to get back on track, thank you, thank you, helped me, and we we are here because we want this. You want this. That's why you are here. I know why you are here. Because this need, this call for inner transformation, it, it's 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 like bugging us. And we want to we wanna see ourselves in living this life, going through this journey, happier, right? Understanding what's going on with us. We should not be a crowd of, I don't know how many people are here, 25, 30? We should not be a crowd of 30 people here. Okay, with no disrespect to the discarnate people, uh, I'm just talking about the incarnates now, we should be 100 people here every single night. I mean, they close on Sunday. <laughs> but we sh we, it should be crowded. Right? We should, we should all be trying to understand what's going on. There's something going on. I, I see a lot of, a lot of uh, th there is a movement of people. Something is going on. And they make this video like, this great person used to be like this and like that and made this in their life, killed all this. This is a movement of people saying, something is going on. Right? Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, they're going to school and getting married and doing all the things. Exactly. And then they find out that that's totally different than the human nature, huh? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let me ask you this. This is the last question. This, let me ask you this. If you are going to a dangerous place, I'm from the Amazon rainforest. Have you been to a dangerous place here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you been to a, like a jungle? Something? Before you go. <laughs> I don't know where it's that, but it was something. Oh, oh my gosh. So before you go to that place, before you go to a dangerous place, what do you do? You pray. You pray and then you do what? Research. Research. You're going to look for someone that already they've been there before. Right? They say, call Maria. You've been to that place. Can you tell me? Can you give me some details about that dangerous place I'm going to? If you have to go, right? So you have to go. And then you will find out someone that knows better. Right? Then let's see this question. <laughs> so what is the perfect standard that God has offered to humankind as guided model? Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus. 
So he knows every single part of this journey. So that's why we go. Uh, the, we, uh, these people, they're part of this movement. The, they're more spiritualized. They got to bring down Jesus from the cross, okay? <laughs> that's, that's not his goal. His goal is to teach us how to live this, to go through this journey in, in better terms, happier, more confident about ourselves. Okay? Okay, so look at Jesus. Then let's look at Jesus. Okay. What our guide say? Jesus, it's our guide, right? It says, do not lay up or stockpile for yourselves treasures on earth. Hmm. Science of happiness or po positive psychology, they have been studying happy people for decades, right? And they, the study shows, that their findings shows that happy people, you know what they do? They know that material wealth is only a very small part of the equation. Actually, really, really happy. Very, very small. Actually, I'll show you this book later. It's very small. You're going to be surprised. Right? So, matter of fact, in 1940s, Americans, they say that they were very happy people. And then they scored 7.5 out of 10 on happiness. Okay. What do you think is our score now? We have iPads, we have iPods, we have fast cars. We have like 3.5. <laughs> 3.5? 4.5. 5.0. 5. We don't believe in ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm not talking about mine. I'm just talking about in general. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe five. Maybe five? All right. Actually, 7.2. We are slightly lower. But it's about the same. So in 1940s, I don't know if you know, but... American families, they didn't have much, you know. Nobody. So actually, the findings are very interesting. I'm not going to get uh, deep in that, but it's a very small part of the equation of our happiness. I'd like to comment on this. Yes, please. If you quantify what, what you had lack of with a 7.5 score, uh -huh. take all that you didn't have. Now, add all the things <laughs> we have now, and it's only 7.2. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred times more, but we're less happy. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Good so point. Back then, they, they still had, they had so many immigrants that were coming over from their poor countries that people still remembered what was going on. They True. Were just, they weren't expecting handouts and everything else back then, so they learned to be happy. With yeah. What they had. Yeah. And they didn't have all. They didn't have the computer and the t everybody True. didn't have a TV saying, "Hey, this is the way our life is supposed to yeah. be." Yeah. And so we didn't have so much to compare ourselves, so we compared ourselves to, to you and you and you. Yep. And, hey, it's different, but it's showing that. We have relationships with you and yeah. you and you instead of just walking by everybody. But it's amazing to see that we have a lot of technologies in our days and still we are slightly lower in happiness. Okay, let's keep going. So our guide says, Jesus say, it's not life more than food. And the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Guess what? The happiness, the, the science of happiness says that the uh, happy people, they have an optimistic thinking. Just like Jesus was trying to tell us. They understand that problems and challenges in life, they're not forever. Happy people, they know, they learn how to cope with those problems. And they don't allow those problems to ruin their lives. Okay, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Science of happiness says that happy people, they know it's good to do good. Like volunteering, it's totally connecting with, connected with health and longevity. And it's connected with much more, it's just we don't have time to talk about it. 
the next opportunity. So Jesus said, Jesus teaches us the best way to connect with the Creator. There are way too many examples of, of Jesus connecting with, with the Creator. And this is just a passage from the Bible. So this then is how you should pray. So happy people, this is science, family. This is science, right? Happy people cultivate spiritual emotions. This is important, actually. This is, uh, this is very important. So there is a, a growing body of science explaining why uh, religious people are happier, are healthier, uh, and recover more quickly from trauma than non-religious people. Mm -hmm. And also the, the uh, spiritual uh, emotions are essential to our, our psychological wealth, the research suggests. So uh, Jesus uh, connected to all kinds of people. What kind of people Jesus connected? Everybody. Everyone. All Outcast. Outcast. Everyone, right? So happy people, they build a strong social fabric. N not, not that Facebook, I saw this Facebook, uh, <laughs> this joke that was a, a funeral, it was totally empty, and one lady said, this, he had 2,000 friends on Facebook. I don't understand why this is up. <laughs> but anyways, not, so it's strong. So it's happy people, they stay connected with their families, with community such as ours, right? Worship. They, these strong connections act as a buffer to depression, and they create a strong and meaningful connections. Uh, th these are, so they build a strong social fabric so this is the World, World Health Organization saying, predicts that by 2020, depression will be the second leading cause of mortality in the world. So today, today we are uh, one death by every 40 second, 40 second, by 2020, it's gonna be by 20 second. One death by 20 second, right? Yeah. So uh, Jesus left, left wonderful teachings to us, a legacy of wonderful teachings on gratitude. And guess what? They practice gratitude. Happy people practice gratitude. This is very important. And I'm going to give it to you two um, uh, scientific proven uh, exercises you can do and you can pass along as well. They are wonderful. They're magic. It's, it's un unbelievable. You're going to love this. So the first one, Oh, just to say that it helps with the trauma, stress, increases self-esteem, and helps dissolve negative emotions, and much more if you practice gratitude. So gratitude visit exercise. So this gratitude visit exercise, you get a pen and paper, and then you close your eyes, and then you bring a face in your mind of someone that affected your life in a positive way, but you never had the chance to properly thank them. So what you do, when you have a face, this person needs to be alive, in, in a body, I mean. <laughs> and uh, when you have a face, and then you open your eyes, and then your task is to write a letter, with a three words letter. But be objective, right? Go straight to the point. 300, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry. No, 300, it, it's very small. 300 words, you go, go straight to the point, and then you call them, don't tell them anything, and, um, you tell them you want to you meet them. And then you ask them, of course, to read the whole thing and not to be interrupted. And of course, there is weeping, but it's magical. And the science of happiness says that both of you, not only you, but the other person, will be happy for months. And then you can schedule that on your schedule to do it again in two months, in three months. It's, it's magical and it's, it's proven that we work. So what went well exercise is another one that cured uh, people with depression without uh, any medicine. <clears throat> if you actually, if you look it up those exact words, you're gonna find the studies. So what went well, you from starting tonight, so every night, you write about three things that went well today. And it could be anything. It could be a small thing. It could be a big, a big thing. And uh, you write down. you got to have a track on, on that idea. 
and then you say, how did you feel? So if you do that every night, that you're going to teach your brain to look at the, the things that make you happy and feel uh, grateful about. And this, it's a, a, an amazing exercise. I, I do that. I actually do that every night. I do both. I do both, actually. We need to finish. OK, now it's really quick. So to, to wrap it up, this science of happiness thing, science of happiness divided happy, happy lives in three groups. So there is the pleasant life. And it, people in this group, they are having many, as many pleasures as possible. And they're learning skills to amplify their happiness, looking for more pleasures and pleasures in life. But science find out that this is 50% of this happiness is heritable and it habituates, which means that you buy a Ferrari today, in a month, it's just going to be another car. There is proof. There is, there is proof on that, OK? I'll show it to you. And the second group <coughs> is the good life. So the people in the good life, they are in a flow. So what they do, they're really engaged. And um, time and with what they're doing, with their abilities, stop. It's, it's like also when you are cleaning the house and you don't see the time passing, or when you are playing an instrument or listening to that song. This is called flow. And this is a, a type of uh, happiness, and this is very important. So the people of this group, they detected this, their blueprint, their strength, and they go for it, right? They reshape their entire life to go into that flow. And there is this third group, which is the meaningful life. Where is that? OK, the meaningful life. So the people in this group, they know their blueprint. They know they are. They go right to the point. They know their mission. And they know their, their strengths and their values. And they are using them to belong to in service, right, for others. So this is the, the top. Ben, well, and we're going to wrap it up right now with, uh, oh, you're good? OK. We have this exercise we're going to do together because I'm going to prove to you that you are part of this first group. The Meaningful Life. Huh? You didn't know this, huh? Got you. OK. So I want you to recall in your life when you felt wonderful about yourself, when you were doing something, it doesn't matter what it is, it's small, big, there is no such a thing. You were doing something that you said, this is me. I love doing this. I felt so good about this. I want to do this again. You felt whole and complete, you felt this warm feeling in your heart, I'm sorry, uh, a wor warm feeling in your heart, and you said, this is me. Can you recall, you have a few seconds, and you're going to share with someone, OK? You got it? Yes. You know, you know? All right, go. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> don't sleep. You don't remember? It's like, um, mm, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you mine, right? Mm, my mom, we had a, a few projects together. And the last project was her eye surgery. And when, when she did that, and I went to the hospital to pick her up. And when we were in the elevator, and I realized, I said, mom, and my, my eyes were full of water. I said, mom. This is our last project. We did everything. I felt so good about this. It felt so wonderful. I'm like giving love to my family, to my mom, and achieving the goals of my family. I realized that it was wonderful for me. It's something like that. Do you recall something in your life? In April, I ran a half marathon. I want to do that. It was like a big achievement. Oh, yeah. You felt, how did you feel? Great, yeah. I mean, it's like I, I wanted to do it, and it took a really long time to train, and you know, it was a challenge, and you accomplished the challenge. Right? I, I put the sticker on my car, and I tell everybody I share well, it. I, I'm training, I'm running too, because I want to do the marathon. It's a great feeling of achievement, right? Of persistence, of courage. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're running, it's like you're, you're 
in the flow. You were in the flow. Oh, totally. Exercise, it's, it's amazing, yeah. Still don't remember? So, going back to that he says, it's going ahead, I never learned how to see it. Okay. Okay. And here I am, I'm going to tell my age, but a couple of years ago, I put in my mind, I will, and I said it by the end of the year, I will, and I did it. Oh my gosh. Um, wow, just. It definitely was the biggest accomplishment because right. I had fear of the water. I'm going to water from here and it's Oh, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big and, deal. You know, uh, the first to be able to cross, the feeling to cross mm. on one side, not this side of the pool, but this side of the pool was wonderful. Wow. And you felt wonderful about yourself. Yes. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, so everybody, does everybody have a story of your life? Yes. Too many? Yes. But you know, uh, I cannot, I could not remember one that I say. Okay. But I have to have many. Have many. Them that I do what I, you know, I, sometimes you don't even know that you're doing. But at the end, when you go home and you feel that happening inside you. Right. And you know that. And then you have this this feeling, and it stays with you for a while. Lightness. And if you if you talking about it, you you live again, the the emotions and the memories. Yes, you, it will never go away. Was it good to talk about this? Yes. To talk about something when you were. At the best of yourself, was it good? Yes. So that's when your life is meaningful to you, right? And we, we just need to bring it more and do more things like that. So we know how it feels to have a meaningful life. And I am sure, uh, does any one of you had the, the story that you are by yourself on the top of a mountain? And uh, maybe, maybe, but... <laughs> Usually, we are with somebody else, right? This is, we are sharing the, the experience. Well, well, this is it. And I hope you have learned something about yourself. And I, I had tons of fun here with you. And maybe next time we can do more exercises like this. And I want to tell you that you are very resourceful, Every, each one of you. And hopefully, when you cross that door and you go home, you will find someone really lucky to have you. So you can bring a nice word to that person. And you can, and I'm sure, I know, I have faith in you, I know you can bring a smile to someone. And, and that's why we come here and we create this wonderful connection which, with each one of you, and that's what I want more and more, to get to know you and to participate even more of this community. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Oh. <laughs> the guy dancing.